An important investigation raising controversial questions about how far is too far when it comes to physical discipline and control in schools. For most kids, the worst they've got to fear from unruly behavior in class, it's a trip to the principal's office. But in some schools, students are receiving far more severe treatment, like being locked in windowless cells or stuffed into bags. Now, some of the footage you're about to see is not easy to watch. Here's ABC's Brian Ross with a Nightline Investigates. This surveillance video shows a high school student by the name of Andre McCollins in the lower right of the screen, about to go through what his school calls skin shock therapy for misbehavior. <laughs> about 60 volts of therapy. There are no national standards for the punishments or restraints used on school children, including those like Andre with severe behavioral difficulties. I can't believe they call themselves human and do such a thing to someone who's so vulnerable. It is an extreme example, but perfectly legal. An ABC News investigation found that only 17 states have specific laws that protect students from harsh, some say barbaric methods of restraint and other techniques. Someday we're all gonna, I think we're all gonna look back and we're gonna say, can you believe what we did here? Why are there red marks all over him? In Dallas, this video was made by the mother of a fourth grade boy with autistic characteristics. As she tried to get the staff member to let go of her child. Let him go! In Kentucky, a mother found her autistic eight-year-old son had been stuffed into a duffel bag like this one, specially made to restrain children. And schools across the country are investing in specially built so-called seclusion rooms or screen rooms like this one, where young students can be locked up for hours. And they'd lock you in there, and it was dark, there's no windows, you're just stuck in there for the whole day. At the age of 11, Jordan knows all too well what can happen. It's scary, really scary. Even for the bravest person in the world, it's still really scary. Now, some members of Congress are trying to get such restraint and seclusion techniques prohibited or restricted by federal law. There's thousands and thousands of children that have, that have been traumatized, that have been injured. But the proposed law is opposed by public school administrators as too restrictive. They say they need a range of techniques and leeway to deal with autistic students and others who are increasingly being mainstreamed into public schools. They are emotionally disturbed, they have behavioral issues, and they tend to act out. And when they do act out, uh, sometimes they become a danger to themselves uh, or a danger to, to others. Daniel Dominich of the School Superintendents Association agreed some of the techniques being used, including the electric shock seen on the tape, are indeed too much. They're horrendous. It makes me sick. Dominich admitted some teachers do need more training, but he defended the use of some of the restraints others call barbaric, including the seclusion or scream rooms. If the situation warrants it in order to protect the child from hurting himself, but you know you, what? But if you don't think that's barbaric? Is it, but listen, then I'm a barbarian. But all too often, students have died after being restrained with the approved techniques. The most recent, 16-year-old Corey Foster of New York City. A surveillance tape shows the young man at a residential school for students with special needs as he apparently refused to stop playing basketball. Teachers and staff surround him. One, two, three, four, five. And then, says his mother, Sheila Foster, they forced him to the ground. And now he's down. They're, push they're pulling him down, yes. The school says its staff used what it called a correctly performed and state-approved therapeutic hold, and only after other de-escalation techniques failed with Corey. There was nothing therapeutic about that. A short time later, Corey Foster was dead. The medical examiner ruled it an accident, that Corey died of cardiac arrest while being subdued. Just looking at these pictures, knowing that I won't feel him hug me anymore, or say, I love you, mommy. Yes, it hurts. Focus up here, guys. The Centennial School in Bethlehem, Pennsylvania says there is an alternative to the physical, hands-on approach used in so many schools. Here, there are no seclusion rooms, and teachers almost never use any restraints, even though the students here all have a history of trouble or violence at other schools. But that isn't fair! We watched as one student, nine-year-old Vinny, started acting up in the classroom. The teachers separated him from the others, 
but never put a hand on Vinny. We walked away. We reminded him to use a calm body and polite words. And that worked? It did work. It may take a while, but it's certainly better than putting my hands on him. That's the philosophy that the school's director, Dr. Michael George, would like to see spread across the country. So you don't think these restraints, these seclusion rooms, you don't think they work? I do not. I think they contribute to the problem. How so? They make children angrier. They make children resentful. They make children want to engage in a, more aggression, to get even, to get back. And we heard just that from six of the Centennial students, including Jordan. You felt scared and upset and you were already angry. They described how they said they were dealt with at previous schools. They cross your arms and they hold you like that. They had this really big man that pinned me to the ground. They would just literally just lay on top of you and you'd just be laying there, can't move. It was really hard to breathe. Do you think that kind of thing works? Does that? Mm, no. 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 It makes no. things worse, sir. No. Makes it worse? It makes things worse because that's how I get angrier and angrier and then suddenly I feel like bursting into flames. It isn't a very pleasant thing to be restrained at all. I think sometimes when like you get upset, it's always nice to get like a good hug or something. But for now, what happens at this school is the exception, not the rule. For Nightline, Brian Ross, ABC News.